Both teams have hit 12 baskets. 12 of 38 for the Wesleyan, Texas Wesleyan Rams. 12 baskets on 34 shots for the Lions, but it's been the three-point shooting led by Jason Gentry, John, that has these Lions clinging to a one-point lead against number seven team that doesn't look too phased by this uh, run by the Lions. Uh, yeah, you know, that, and that's kind of a scary thing. I don't know you, what you do when you're uh, Coach Bostwick. You go in and you go, man, you guys play great. They're only down one. Mm -hmm. Rebounding <clears throat> 10 Ten rebound advantage for the Rams. Everything else, John, fairly yep. close. Assists, turnovers, steals, blocks. A few, you yep. know, yep. minor advantages, but not much at all. I think this has all the makings of an outstanding second half. If Wesley, though, can come out and assert themselves, as we know they are, they could, I, I hate to say, they could still blow this thing wide open. If the Lions yep. start to leak oil in the shooting, we could be in trouble. Yeah, they, 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 they've got to continue the, uh, the effort from an execution from shooting and then play excellent defense and stop the playmakers on uh, the Ram side. And uh, if they if they can do that, then they could walk away with this uh, with a victory in this match. But uh, that's not going to be easy to do, Rob. doy has been quiet, works it over to Key. Jason Gentry's been hot, works on Ellis. Slides through back behind the back, getting too cute there. Looking for Rowe in the corner. Yeah, Rowe not on the same page there. Rowe moving out to the three-point line. And uh, that, that's a little bit that guard mentality still left in him. And uh, as we said, his guard moved down to forward and center. Um, just a couple years ago, he was only 5'8". Now he's 6'6". Six, six. Both teams now with eight turnovers. And there come... The Texas Wesleyan Rams, their first lead of the ball game, right out of the shoot. And that's what you're used to seeing Jarrell Ellis do. Just sit in there, relax, and shoot the ball well. There's a guy that's not heated up yet today and was on fire. Jason Gentry fire uh, at, on Thursday, which led these guys to a huge victory. Rogers getting, well, actually, Rowe getting tangled up with Buckley off the Rogers miss. And that's and a, that's an important early foul on uh, on Buckley, and that's three. And he's officially in foul trouble. Going to the bench already. As you see, going to get Stubbs, there. Eric Stubbs out there. Saw the score there. St. Greg's with the upset win over WBU. Rashad. Shadowed by Rogers, high screen from Rowe, pick and roll, pass behind. Rowe slides through the paint, flips it over to Key for three. Not there, cleared by Jeffrey. Crowd on their feet. In the jungle part of the sections where the students hang out as they are urging these Lions to hang in there against the number seven team in the land, now down for the first time tonight by two. Good ball movement by the Lions. Rashad had Rowe, now gets it into Rowe. And he senses the double team didn't come. So he says, I'll go to my patented left-handed hook and he's working on Buckley and puts it through. What a fantastic shot. That, the, it, it, Isaac Rowe showing you some some ability there. That's a that's not an easy shot to do, especially if you're used to shooting outside. That is something he's worked on uh, throughout the year very hard, and it's paying off now. I was equally impressed with what he did in about the two seconds before he shot. Got the ball, reached up his position, head on a swivel, felt the double team not coming, turn, spin, still not there. I'm going to take it up. And the space was there, and that's just the mark of a maturing player. It doesn't play like a freshman anymore. No, no. Isaac Rowe has played well beyond his years. He's got a really high uh, basketball IQ. You can see there he knew uh, he left too early. He's, he was playing. Uh, that was a freshman type move, but he, now he knows. He knew it immediately what he did wrong, and he'll make the correction. Uh, wow. In and out. Blocked from behind and a whistle. And what do you do when you got guys, you know, that are, are you're giving up four or five inches 
Um, it, it's just going to be hard to contain uh, any of that low post play when, when you got Stubbs and uh, you got uh, uh, guys like Buckley, Buckley cleaning it up, and and you're trying to prevent that easy put back, but it's going to yield out into a foul. Now here's a Doy taking the bench, three fouls, no points. He was basically our player of the game two days ago, and, well, but he's been almost non-existent today. So uh, he presented the matchup problem to Southwestern last time, but this time the Rams, the way they're structured, their bigs are so big, even their, their, their smaller guys are big, they present a matchup problem for him. He's having to work extremely hard on the defense, and it's just not opening up anything offensively for him. Gentry. With a road. Now Mitchell just checked in for a doy. Patience. And they're gonna call instead of travel yep. on Mitchell instead of a charge. And he needs to just run down and say thank you uh, for that because uh, he just came across. Uh, if he would have actually maintained his position and backed into him, not a problem. That would have been an easy flop call. But because he came across with his elbow. Uh, he's, he's lucky that uh, that wasn't uh, a foul. Three ball from Rogers. Long rebound picked up by Buckley. Or Stubbs, check that, Stubbs. And Rashad out up ahead. Surveys, comes through, spots up key for three. And no one in the gym can believe it. Gentry whistled for a foul. Looked like he went straight up and just out. As you see, yeah. the jungle is not happy. Just out jumped. <laughs> rightfully so, rightfully so. Just out jumped. Yeah. I don't see he what went nothing a fantastic but vertical. How rebound. can you call that a foul? Oh, yeah. A fantastic rebound. I think the, 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 how the play wound up, no fault of uh, Jason Gentry there, but the other player kind of moved forward just because he jumped that way. And it was an anticipation call by the referee. Long ball, good ball. Chris, Gracella I love tickles that. the net. I, lo I love the Gracella archery move. That, that, that's very, very nice. He's got 14, a timeout. Bostwick has seen enough, and he wants to talk with the refs about that last call with the gentry foul. He can't believe it. And he should, it. and he should. he should. He should be right there. That's his job. That's part of... Uh, what you do as a head coach is you go and you iron that out. And you say, Mr. Ref, you owe me one. You know that was a quick whistle. You owe this team one. That that was not right. In all fairness, you guys are playing a, uh, refereeing a good game. But right there, that was a three-point swing. And we got the ball fair and square. And now you see, if you see right behind Gen uh, Boston, you're going to see assistant coach Caleb Gentry working the refs over just outside this huddle, and finally Gentry lets him go. Yeah, and, and and that's what you do. You just remind them. You constantly remind them, look, that you know as well as everybody in the gym, we all saw that. That was a quick whistle. We give you that, but you owe us one. Five-point lead, largest of the game. This first lead didn't even happen until 1905 left in the game. It's been all Lions until just the last few minutes as you see the referee being harassed. There's the guy right there. We'll see if he makes <laughs> I, things right. And in all fairness, I seriously doubt that will be the last. Uh, uh, Harassment he receives? Uh, uh, yeah, and, and the last <laughs> quote-unquote bad call that uh, either one of these coaches will feel like the refs made. And it'll go, it'll go down that way. The refs are doing a good job uh, letting these guys play, but keeping them under control. And when you get a fast-paced game like that, a lot of tippers tend to flare. A lot of emotions um, get jacked up, and uh, and referees become bodyguards more than uh, actual referees. Rashad taking it to the rim. It's a good move by Rashad, creating the contact. May have, really may have somehow. I don't know how he avoided the foul, but that looked like a little bit of uh, uh, contact that could have been called as a foul. You see timeouts left, five to four. Plenty of timeouts left for both ball clubs. Three ball, no good. 
Gentry working his way inside. Here come the Rams, a chance to extend that five point lead. And Akano got one defender in the air, then got uh, another defender with the bump. That's a senior play right there. That's right, yeah, just going in, creating the contact and uh, maintaining. He probably would have spin, spun off of that and, and uh, gone up with it. Gets the contact, Mitchell moving in just ever so late, just a hair late. Talk about what defines a charge versus a block in a situation like that where the help defense is coming. How do you, what's the eye test for you to say that's a charge versus that's a blocking foul? Well, it, a lot of times it comes down to is the player set or not? And you gotta, you gotta at least beat the defender to the spot. Uh, or the offensive player as a defender, you gotta beat them to the spot. Like there's another example yep. there, both are in transition, right. so there's no, there's no way Rodgers is gonna get a, char a charge call. He's right, right, he's moving, foul. he's moving. He's, he didn't beat the offensive player to the spot. So uh, you could still be moving as long as you're ahead of the offensive player and get the, sh get the foul. You don't have to be absolutely still to get the charge. You just have to be in front. And, and that's a first very good point, spot. John. A lot of young players aren't aware of that. As long as you have position between your person you're guarding and the rim, then you'll probably get the charge call. But it's when you're moving. It's about real estate. And, you know, who's, who's in possession of the real estate? Second free throw is on the mark. The lead is cut to four with 14.25 left. The, just the first point for key all day, John. Lions got to be careful with this token uh, full court man-to-man -man, uh, pressure that they don't get beat. These guys are extremely fast and strong. They can, they, they can make passes happen very easily. Off that high screen pick that freed up some space down in the paint. Deion Rogers, man, he's showing us he, he's got game. And uh, that little tear, teardrop uh, that he has, he's got it under control. And that's not the first time he's executed that shot. Erskine backs it out, skips it over to Rowe for three. Not there. Mitchell fighting for it. Mitchell. Second effort. Third now a third effort. Now that's the, that's the kind of play they're going to have to get out of Remington Mitchell. Just that second effort, that third effort. Keep stay home. Keep the ball alive. Don't give up on the fight. His first points of the game. He's got two. Does have three fouls. Careful. That was almost the fourth right there. Careful, Mr. Mitchell. Swearingen was looking up ahead. He does find Key for three. Oh, that's what we needed! Just what the doctor ordered! Three-pointer number 10, and the lead is cut to one. So the tenacity and the scrappiness of uh, the Lions right now, staying home, keeping the ball alive for them to grab is what's really paying off. Oh! Rowe with a reject and a loose ball on up ahead to Key. Backs it out wisely. He'll take a three. Got it! Key buries another one. A la Reggie Miller backing it up. Said, come get you some three ball. I wear number three. The lead is back to two for the Lions. And a travel. The Rams are coming unraveled. And you see a quick timeout. Shingleton seen enough. That's right. And that's smart timeout for Coach Shingleton. Uh, just going to reset his ball club, remind them. Uh, don't succumb to the pressure. Don't succumb. Don't don't let the the uh, um, the jungle, the the crowd, the uh, all the noise get in your head. Don't lose touch with fundamental basketball. Do what we do, and uh, and and they probably needed a blow. They 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 were uh, really working hard there, and a few errors you could just tell were probably due to some cardio fatigue and uh, mental fatigue. Lions on a 9-2 run. Great block there, uh, Isaac Rowe, good timing. USAO dropping one to OK City. Mackew in a battle against Southwestern Christian. No surprise to you, John. You have high respect for SWC, of course. Yeah, they came and in Bacon here. Bacon upsets John Brown. Yeah, and, and uh, 
Southwestern Christian came in here Thursday and just played as bad as they probably will play all year long. And uh, that was not indicative of how good or bad a ball club they really are. So uh, these guys can beat anybody on the schedule, really. They, they've got a really good guy uh, center in stills. And uh, that guy reminds me a lot of Kevin Durant. You know, not, not quite as high caliber, but he can shoot the 15, the 16, even 17-foot shot. And he came in and, and did just that on us. Um, plus, he's got a good low post game. Leads back in the Lions' hands off the strength of that Kiyanka, Kiyanka Watkins three. Swearingen calling for the ball. Fights through, picks up a double team, gets it back to Watkins. Five on the shot clock, big prayer. Not there, loose rebound. Uh, Mitchell still fighting for it. Had possession momentarily, John. Unable to maintain possession. Now here come the Rams, a chance to tie. Under 12 to play. Strong move to the rim. Too strong, though. Akano. Check Akano's numbers for you. He's eight on three of seven shooting. He did a good job there creating some space and, and getting himself elevated to get a good shot. He just threw it up a little too hard. Uh, and he's a dangerous player. You're going to watch him come down to the end. He will be a difference maker. Averages 15 a game. Leading, leading score, of course, Ellis with 18. Dave Rogers, third leading score with 12.8. And Ellis is yet to get hot. And you got, you, you're going to have to be careful. He's not in the game right now. But when... Uh, when Ricardo at the buzzer. And when he gets on. Rebound from Stubbs. Yeah, that's a killer. Those long rebounds and a whistle on a tough shot by Akano. You just can't overemphasize that on those long balls, most of the time the rebounds are going to be long, and that gives the offense just a bit of an advantage, I think. Absolutely. Because usually the defense is packed in the paint. Marquis Young will check in for Mitchell. And, and look at the height difference here. They got to go to the big guy and then it just try to draw a foul on Marquis and Young. They do just that, oh. John, with a triple team now. And Erskine, with the help defense, whistled for the quick foul. He can't believe it. Uh, well, here's here's what happens on that. You get a, a, a smaller guy. He's he. It looks like he's grabbing a lot of ball, but he's grabbing a lot of arm too. And uh, it, he, he, a little guy like that doesn't just tear away a, a, a ball from. Uh, a, a big man like that. There's the pick and roll, and you kind of saw there Stubbs almost get in Akano's it's way. It's going to be at least, well, now this is going to be a two-shot foul, but now that puts uh, that puts Texas Wesleyan in a uh, one-on-one -one situation from here on. As you saw Stubbs try to get out of the way of his, of his teammate, Akano, who took the high screen pick and went to the rim himself. Two fouls for the Rams, and that's right, seven fouls for the Lions. And this is trouble for the Lions on down because every foul they commit now, uh, the, the Texas West is going to have a free opportunity to score. For the next 11-15. Ninth point for Akano, inching toward his average, the senior, one of the leaders, again, out of Philadelphia, an Essex County College transfer. Got to save that. We're going to keep it right here. And you see the Rams are happy with that little turn of events off a missed free throw rebound. That's a borderline turnover. I mean, it's not officially a turnover because they have possession, but you should have had that ball. Here's the Lions. Stubbs over to Econo. There's the high screen again. Gets past Gentry. Skips it back behind his back wow. to a B.J. Watts, who buries his first three-pointer of the game. B.J. Bats. His first points of the game. B.J. Yeah, Bats. Yeah, yeah. and he hasn't had a whole lot of clock uh, uh, today, but we saw him in warm-ups, and this kid can really shoot. He can light it up. They're not going to let him get away with the hand check there. And this is what we're talking about, the consistency. You can't just start saying, oh, well, you know, uh, calling the ticky-tack fouls um, just because 
uh, it, when you look up at the scoreboard, it's imbalanced, and uh, they're trying to even some things up. And that, that happens in the ref world uh, a lot. Really? They, they oh, look up oh, at the uh, absolutely. foul total? Uh, well, they will because, uh, in this case, Donnie Bostwick will l make them look at it. And go, What's going on here? Another three ball. Wow. Now the Rams starting to find their rhythm. That's B.J. Betts again. And, and like, like I said, uh, this kid... He, could sh he showed us in uh, pregame warm-ups that he can really shoot. I mean, he, I saw him hit about 12 in a row. Lions had a 9-2 run, and now it's been a 6-0 run the last three and a half minutes with the number seven team in the nation. Looking to essentially clinch the Sooner Athletic Conference with the win today. It'll be all but clinched with Mackey on the ropes on the road and we'll take a look at our current standings. Of course, with Mackew in trouble, they would drop to, if they were to lose, uh, 11 and five. And if Wesleyan does pull out this win, they'll be three games clear to be essentially done. So a huge, huge uh, turn of events are happening both in Mid-America's game and here at the Schaefer Center. We'll keep you up to date on that Mid-America game as it unfolds. They got their hands full right now against Southwestern Christian. You see, walk us through what you see here with the men's basketball bracket, John. Well, I mean, this is uh, just simply the way it is right now. We know we, we could look in and go uh, give a better idea based on some projections uh, for the rest of um, uh, the, the, the season because it's this game plus two. And uh, if somehow the Lions could walk away with this with a W, that would put them in a great position to be in fourth place. But more than that, it shows the NAIA National Raiders that Sagu is back and we're, we're they're, they're coming uh, for a very good postseason and they need to be considered uh, even if they don't win the tournament. Um, uh, they they would be good enough to play. What a pass inside to Adoy. It was on Rowe. the ground. How about the little slip pass? And again, you love the bounce pass. Here it was. It was a low bounce pass too. And that's one thing that uh, that Rashad Alexander does so well. Well, that was Rowe though on that pass. Oh, okay. Well, it, he does it well too. He's got those long arms, so his hands are actually low to the ground. Uh, again, a former guard used to getting the ball to big men in high school. Keonta Watkins getting a little bit in trouble. He's got to be careful. Adoy, will he get on track? Nope. Uh, what? Jason Gentry turns it around, flips, no good. And Probably Bats. an errant, not a, not a great decision. They're trying to make something happen. B.J. Bats really coming off the bench here in the second half, contributing in a big way. Two big three-point shots plus two rebounds uh, that uh, are very meaningful. And now you're beginning to see the whistle a lot more frequently. Yeah, just the, not the same call, uh, level of calling in the first half. We're seeing more ticky-tack. Uh, you know, it, Jason Gentry just fighting through a pick. It was not flagrant. It was, wasn't coming over too hard. He was just doing what he had to do. And he's, 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 he's telling the ref, you know, look, the guy's leaning out. I've got to have some kind of space to get around. So, uh not a very good call and very inconsistent from the first half. Rodgers has six points, looking for number seven. He's got it. But this is where when you have a big team, um, you're going to, uh, the, the mismatches, yeah, I mean, that's that's just, that's not good. Um, that present a problem and will present foul problems and foul, you know, now these guys are, are going to get to shoot one and one and two more fouls. They're in a double bonus situation. They'll get two looks at free shots. Rodgers has eight, the lead is seven. Adoy's been quiet. He does find Rowe. Slips past one defender and he'd go to the line. Using the rim as an extra defender. A lot of players. Or a screen. Just, or a screen. They just go straight to the rack. Use that rim as your rim as your friend at times. Yep. Reverse it. And also, many times the defender anticipates you jumping up in front of them. Instead, watches, instead of going right here, takes an extra step, the leap up in the air. Get some hang time there, John. Yeah, 
And the upside to this kid, Isaac Rowe, is just so big. He, if he stays around this area, he will be a tremendous player for the Lions. And uh, I could be one of those special kids like Rambo. Took the um, words out of my mouth. I was going to say almost verbatim, I cannot wait to see this kid just blossom into maybe perhaps one of the, the best players we've seen come through this program. We'll wait and see. He's just a freshman. We'll put pressure on the kid, but he is definitely gifted. Miss. Another miss. <laughs> and a doy. Anticipating the foul and just totally whiffed. Careful, careful. And not so. Here come the Rams in transition. And that's going to be foul number four. Four on Emmanuel Adoy. And and that is just the smarts of a senior player like Akanam or, or Akana. Um to he just he, he just drove in and made contact happen. Not not out of control contact, but just good contact. Which is going to go his way. The Eagles with a six point lead over Mackey. And he just kind of got caught in traffic there, did a doy. Well, we know Coach Dave Bliss, being a, a, an all-star Hall of Fame type coach he is, wasn't going to let his team come out and just lay a goose egg two nights in a row. All right, Lions under nine, 840 left. The lead is six. Need a good shot here. Deion Rogers playing excellent defense. I, I to be honest with you, good haven't seen shot. anyone play defense that well on Rashad Alexander. Rashad Alexander is hard to handle, and being able to stay in front of him like that is just uh, that's special, special effort. He's got nine as he wiggled his way through the defense. Let's cut the lead back to four. Good look for a three. That's bats. Just didn't Lions. get squared up good. Looking to cut into this four-point lead. Got a little lead. mismatch there, there between it is. Uh, Graysella and Remington Mitchell. They need to look at that. Well, it's right there again. It's in the middle. Guards not finding it. Oh, come on, Rashad. McConnum. That was nasty. <laughs> that was just... Nasty, uh. the 12th point off the errant pass from Alexander, trying to get too cute, and the Rams make him pay. At the other end, the lead is back to six. My, my, my. He brought the thunder on that one, ladies and gentlemen, and that's, that's why he's special. Well, if you're Boswick, you have to be just furious with Alexander. He's going to come out. Swear engine back. Look at He's getting a tongue lashing from head coach look at this dunk give it a rating come on 10 <laughs> 10 <laughs> when you do it in play it's different than when it's a dunk contest Gosh. dunk contest maybe an eight but when you do it in game like that that's special i think his elbow was above the rim yeah he floated in on that one and just dialed it up I think Meanwhile. the i think the 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 backboard's still shaking just a little bit <laughs> Meanwhile, Swearingen puts the first free throw in on a foul at the other end. Swearingen had a quiet game so far tonight. Just well, now now the refs have evened it up a little points. bit, and and Zagu is in the uh, uh, bonus. Gets them both. He's got seven. And a near steal. And see that that that's what this team doesn't give up. They don't give up the near steals. They they have good hands. They hold on to the ball. They don't panic. They do what they're supposed to do. And every player seems to be that kind of that caliber. All right, here's a chance now. Numbers are two on two and a whistle. As that rolls off the rim. Key Watkins will go back to the line. He's got nine. That's the first foul on Doug Compton. And, uh, you know, really a ticky-tack foul there, but probably called because he's a bench player. He doesn't get a lot of time, and the refs know that. There it is again. We 
yeah. really just ran right by Compton, <laughs> yeah they, but, not, but not, not a whole lot of anything to that uh, but gives the refs a good opportunity to uh to even that foul score up mm -hmm. there so that they don't get yelled at quite as much by the coaches <laughs> you ever ask yourself why why the fouls always seem to be real really even at the end really yeah, even why. at the end oh that's absolutely why. He returns the favor with his second foul, and there's a five-point lead. Southwestern Christian holding on with two minutes remaining. I'd like I to think know Mackey's how many number thirteen in the nation, and, 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 and uh, seventeen. Seventeen. And I'd like to know how many steals uh, has in this game. There's the easy, uh, easy reach. Ticky right tack, there. just the real. Uh, yeah, it was, but didn't affect the play. Ticky tack foul. Compton. I guess they re repaid the favor. His first two points of the ball game. The lead's back to four. 6 30 in game number two. The Lions, Lady Lions won a thriller in double overtime, 68 61. Lions looking to match that with an upset win over number seven, Texas Wesleyan. Is that, all right, now watch this. Look, look at the mismatch that happens. They, they go to the double team over the top, and uh, they miss Remington Mitchell there. He drops down. You've got to be able to yep. recognize that and give your big man a chance. We're going to see Erskine. Go to the line, and there's the foul by Compton. Easy call there. Hands get tangled up. Second foul on Compton, and it's the ninth team foul. One more will put the Lions in the double bonus. And the senior's got to make that one. Boy, those are those are big free throws. I know we're still six minutes left, but like you said, these free throws can catch up with you. Oh, absolutely, and, and, and uh, I'm not sure how many we've missed already, well, but I'll, I'll tell you, yeah. we're nine of thirteen. So we, we've missed four, and we're down four. Not anymore. Wow, down six. Dion Rogers, he is so good. Wow, just so controlled. When you when you got a a a, a duo like Rogers and Bats, I mean, wow. That, that is hard to handle. B.J. Bats coming off the bench uh, replacing uh, uh, Deion Rogers when needed. And, man, just what a prolific scorer he is. You, you get uh, all the assists that Rogers can bring, but the, the prolific slashing of scoring. And then you replace that with the long ball. Slashing his way to the basket is... Mu must be a good to be... Coach Shingleton this year. That was halfway down. The lead will remain five with 535 remaining. Ellis back into the game now. Rogers. Lions playing with a got a matchup zone defense. That's gonna free up one man. That's an easy call right there. An easy call on Rowe as he went airborne and over be, Chris and, and Grisella. I'll, and I'll tell you, you say that's an easy call, but that's a easy it, he put the ref in a bad position. That that you put the ref in an anticipation. Mm. Really, if you look at that, I'll, I'll, i I I'd like to see it. I don't guarantee it, but it didn't look like much contact because he got him up in the air and then he reversed it. Couldn't have been too much contact it on that. Again. See how he slid off? Because the guy bailed him out, and he went to the other side. Yeah, he made a little Grazed contact. Grazed his shoulder, maybe. But I not, not foul-worthy. But he put the ref in a bad position there because the ref's just really tightly looking at Any contact there, it's going to get called. 16 points for the senior from Haltom City out of Kilgore College. Grace, or Chris Gracella. Leading the way for these Rams. Good there look. More magic Good inside left. out. Oh, is there any magic left for the Lions? And this is what having big men will do for you. You clean up the glass. One and done. 
kind of feel the momentum ebbing away here at the Schaefer Center. The it's Rams not, taking it, control. It's a lot of game left to play, and we've seen the Lions be able to dig deep and come up with some runs. So it's not over, but... Now the whistle's blowing pretty freely. Almost every possession is going to be against... Buckley. Buckley. Henry that's, Buckley. That's four on Buckley. The Neosho County College transfer that is the fourth. We're going to see number 40 back in the game, Mitchell. And we're going to see Swearingen check back in just a moment. Isaac Rowe with the line. Rowe tonight is three of five. Now four of six from the charity stripe. Still keeping it close. It's very manageable. Look Rowe. at the height difference there. Yeah, Rowe. As big uh, as Rowe plays, it's still, it's just hard to handle. He's nearing a double-double. Got eight boards and now 12 points. Check that, 13 points now. There's the press. Ooh, nice pickup by Ellis. Just going to work the defense, make sure they're working. Going to keep them honest. They, you know you got them on the ropes. They're tired. Probably not the best shot. Best oh, time to no, take that shot. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Deion Rogers. Again. Just in the right place at the right time. Some found money. Picked up the change and put it in the bucket. Mitchell back to Key. And that is... Second or third, just errant pass we've seen from the from the guards trying to find a big man. First yeah. you had Rashad well, silly behind the back pass, now so, that one. Listen, you're you're so used to seeing six eleven, six ten, you know, coming guarding that paint area that you're you know you gotta you you can't just drill it, you gotta put some loft on it, and it's just getting away from them. Ellis Smartly brings it back out. Great ball handlers. I, even the big guys handled the ball well for this uh, Texas Wesleyan team. Jeffrey's been quiet till now. He had a good presence in the first half. He's got seven. Junior. And another whistle. This is what happens, you know, the, the, uh, a really good team just begins to wear you down. Everything, they do everything really well. They, they guard the perimeter and they guard the paint very well. And now uh, when you're tired, those shots don't come quite as easy. When you're up and when you're coming off in this brand new game, you got fresh legs. It's easy to get in there and just start stroking. And you just got to hope that you're going to stroke it enough to weather the storm in the second half against a team like this. You have just laid out something that sparked something in my mind. This Rams team it, tonight, this game, what you just described, feels and looks exactly like the Lions team that went to the national title game. We called many games in this room where it would be tight, 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 tight. And suddenly with the five minutes left, we were up by 12. Like, how'd that happen? Because the same thing, they just wear you down, wear you down. Skill, height, leadership. Yep. And that's what these Rams are exhibiting, a very much a championship caliber mentality. And we saw it on this court three, four yep. years ago. The Lions were doing what the Rams are doing to the Lions today. That's right. Three, three four years ago. That's right. And, and if you remember back to that team, uh, Coach Boswick had some big boys that he could rely on. You can't go, you can't win tournament style basketball without big men. You're just not going to outshoot another team for 40 minutes. Not not of this caliber. Not, yeah, I mean, that team, it, it, it's more of an anomaly than anything. It just, it won't happen night in and night out. And uh, as good as shooters as, as you saw, and you, they get on fire in the first half, it's, it is just going to be hard to do that again in the second half. 10 point lead. Largest of the game with just 323 left. It's Akano, the leader, the senior. Buries them both. Now Rashad's gonna have to pick up the pace, make some smart decisions. He got a three, 
find the man. You see him trying to find Gentry. And that's a good thing for the Lions, a stoppage of play, a whistle against the Rams, the second foul against Trevon Jeffrey. Yeah, and, uh, if you reach back again into the history books and see that team, one player that we don't talk a lot about uh, that was on that team uh, that was probably the highest impact player was not Dominic Rambo, it was Mike Noelloway. Mm -hmm. And he was a young man, he was a sophomore back then. He transferred to a Division II school after that, which was a really bad loss for the Lions at that point because uh, they could have gone back to the championship game, I believe, if they'd had Noelloway and Rambo and, and Gentry on the same court again. Um, they, they, those were three difference makers. And this team, this Texas Wesleyan team, feels a lot like that team. Very much so. Well, I went on to play at Drury University in Springfield, Missouri. I actually got to play against Duke. His his first year there, yeah. Got got minutes against the I notorious did not know Duke that. team. Yeah, he was so. Is that one of those like first or second games of the season when? Yeah, it was, it was a pickup. Yeah. You know, it's Duke pays. You know, to get a win here or there. Yeah. Not that they have to, but that's just kind of the way the Let's look at our score here. And Southwestern works. Christian, John, excuse me, has upset Mackey going away in the closing minutes by 8. 96-88 to shake up the standings in the Sooner. Can the Lions do the same here at the Schaefer Center? Down 9. Can the top two teams in the district both fall on the same day? That will help. That will That'll help. help. And that's a much-needed spark right there from Rashad Alexander. They need someone to step up and be able to just make big shots happen. It's what gave you a lead in the first half. You might as well just go with it at this point. And that's a good thing I didn't fall in. That's a blown that's a opportunity play. right there. And uh, he knows it. It was a great pass. And you can just kind of see that the Lions' defense is broken down they are gasping, gasping for air and oxygen. They are tired. Alexander with five points. And, and those good. Texas Western still looks like they barely have broken a sweat. If they were to collapse at this point, I would be shocked. But, but uh, it would be to their own undoing, it, it lack of effort. 12 three-pointers, so just three in the second half after putting up nine in the first half for the Lions. Texas Wesleyan playing good, smart basketball, uh, strategically just milking the clock, doing what they have. Don't, don't put any more pressure on themselves than they have to. That's a good look. And that's been happening all game long. Excuse me, all game long. 23, 23 offensive rebounds, John. 50 for the game. I know it feels like it's early to start fouling. They're in the double bonus, but you got to consider your options here. And another, another rebound. offensive rebound. You got to go to the foul. Try to lengthen this game out just a little bit. Make them earn it. And that's going to be probably the, the icing on the cake right there. Foul on the, uh -uh, as he was going up. Two offensive rebounds, and you see Bostic putting five new players, and he's had enough. Well, those disgusted. guys are those, well, you can't be disgusted. Those guys have just their output has been amazing. They are fatigued mentally and physically fatigued. You got to bring fresh bodies in to somehow compensate for the energy loss. The lefty. Strokes it through. The lead back to 10. Deion Rogers may be the player of the game in my book. And another whistle here. It's going to send Little. the Lions to the line. It's going to be swearing Jim. Not sure what happened there, John. Uh, it looked like a, maybe uh, a push from the back uh, as they were setting up in their play. I think it was before it was actually inbounded. So Rodgers gives the Tiger, the uh, Rams a 10-point lead, a minute and 28 left. Swearingen does get one to fall. Well, if you can make some, make some good things happen here, this game's not over. It's a minute and a half left. It's, 
It, it, you can score 10 points in a minute and a half. So you just got to make some good things happen. Freshman Elbert Lawrence seeing his first action of the game. He's a, a shooter. a critical point of the game He's because he is a three-point shooter. And here's the full court press. He can also play some defense. He's Look. got some speed. And, and as you see, it just the, the, the bigness of Texas Wesleyan breaks. They're, they're very controlled. They don't panic, make good passes, keep their head up. Coach called timeout right in front of the action, right in front of the bench as he so saw that, that, was in trouble. Yeah, that wasn't a foul. That was uh, a, a timeout called by Coach. Clearing things up there. So a minute 18, John, down by eight. Obviously, full court press is a no-brainer. What else can you possibly dial up if your head coach, Donnie Boswick, to try to pull out a miracle here tonight at the Schaefer Center? Well, I guarantee you right now he's telling you, you, you've got to make something special happen. So you've got to create a turnover. Guy is, is going to start with a turnover. Can't let them take any more clock off, uh, uh, milk the clock anymore. And uh, the, the clock is our enemy. And we, we can't really afford to foul. Got to get a steal. Force a turnover here. Let's go down and score. And then we'll draw up something else. Meanwhile, Shingleton, walk us through what he may be telling his troops. Well, he's setting up uh, the inbounds play so that they can at least get the ball safely inbounds and get the clock ticking. That's what you got to have. Uh, make no mistakes. Make your passes good. Don't, you know, spread the floor. They're probably, you're going to see a tight bunch on the inbounds pass, and then they're going to spread. And uh, they'll probably let their ball handler, um, and now you see B.J. Bats is in. Uh, he's, so they got three really good ball handlers, uh, four uh, with Akana. Here comes the line, and then it'll be Akana with the spread. And, well, let's see here. I think they're going to keep it right here. Yeah, it, it, got, it got hit. And uh, they'll just do it again. They'll just keep doing this, uh, trying to milk the clock. And there's the spread, too. Uh, A delayed spread. And Erskine with the bump foul is going to send Deion Rogers to the line. Nope, no, it, he, he oh hit my. the ball out of bounds. Yeah, I, I thought it was a bump. It's going to be interesting to see how much latitude that the uh, referees give these guys. Now that's Pate finally with the touch. That'll send B.J. Bats to the line, the Saginaw, Michigan native out of Delta College. He's just a sophomore. And this is where you hope, you know, it's, it's going to be two shots, but you just, you got to hope and pray that they miss and you could come down and, and uh, connect a, a basket, a three-pointer or something. A little extra acting job just in case by Bats. Mitchell's on the bench, Lawrence back on the bench, Gentry back in, as is Key Watkins. Gets them both. Good free throw shooting. Lead back to 10, a minute five left. Erskine now Pate into the paint. Boy, that needed to fall. That could have fallen. That could have been rolled good. Rolled out, yeah. It'll it's stop the It's still good. Clock. The clock is stopped, and uh, if you can pick up two points with the clock stopped, uh, that's a fantastic so turn. What you're seeing here now is offense for defense. Now Lawrence and Mitchell kind of come right back in the game. We'll see Erskine check out. And, and it looks like the player of the game just fouls out Deion Rogers, and uh, that, oh. that's a big loss because he handles the ball so well and, and keeps, keeps everybody's attention. So we'll see. I think B, uh, usually B.J. Bats is his replacement. That's he actually, is on the that's floor. That's actually Chris Gracella just fouled out. I'm sorry, number Chris Gracella. Yeah. He finishes with 16 points and nine rebounds, John. He had a big first half, a big-time contributor, and got a, lot of, got a lot of rebounds, got a lot of touches. Both free throws good. Here's the trap. And he, picked up, he began to dribble. Jump ball. And see, this is where you, you, you have uh, a little inexperience uh, with uh, B.J. Bats. He's got to know, he's got to go through that trap. He can't get down in the corner. So first of all, he's got to give himself some room. Don't, don't dribble down to the corner where you're the most likely, that's a third and fourth defender on you. 
basically it's a turnover with the tie up. At this point, yep. So Pate will inbound. You got shooters in the game. Pate's gonna make a good decision. Gets it out to Alexander. Erskine for three. Not there. Loose ball. And a foul by Pate on Ellis. A chance to put the lead back to 10. That was a good look by Erskine. He's he likes the corner. It just couldn't couldn't get that to negotiate his way down the rim. Yeah, and there was a little pressure there. Uh, you know, a little added pressure to take his focus off of it. Ellis, quiet day. That's only his sixth point, John, of the game. Of course, he is the team's leading scorer with 18.4 a game. So and credit, credit the Lions for at least trying to shut him down today. He's on just two of eight of, yep. from the field. They did their job there. and uh, But Ellis is such a team player. He's a really, really good team player. Distributes the ball well. It didn't try to force anything. So kudos to him, not just going out there trying to make things happen and get his points. They do what they need to do to get the win. Uh -oh. <laughs> I'm not sure why they didn't call the foul. Um, you know, obviously, Zagu trying to get the foul, trying to get the clock stopped. Uh, referees should know a little better than that. The Lions are going to fall up short. Just the tank went on empty, John. Yep. Around the 10-minute mark. Uh, that's all about all the Lions had. The shooting went cold. They don't have the big men to compete. Down for, you know, for 40, 40 minutes. And that's going to be your final. 78 to 66, a convincing second half domination. And so they, they clinch up. They are the regular season champs with that win. And uh, they're very excited. That's, a, that's what you see, a little bit of the extra celebration. They know that they can now stand tall as the uh, Sooner Athletic Conference regular season champs. And a, a hearty congratulations to these Rams. We we appreciate their rivalry going back to Red River days, and they it's a well-deserved win, a well-deserved conference crown. Best wishes to them in their season as we are going to be hopefully maybe facing them again in a conference play. I think they're a lock for perhaps a top four or five seed, maybe even a top three seed in the NEIA tournament. Well, yeah, not a whole lot of changes unless you lose. So if anyone above them lose, then they could probably gain some ground, but not not likely that they move too much in the national polls. So there's your latest standings, folks, as up to the minute with a three-game lead with two games left. That means the math is pretty simple. Texas Wesleyan has won the Sooner Athletic Conference regular season. Congratulations to the Rams. They clinch it here at the Schaefer Center. Mid-America falling today to 11-5. Oklahoma City at 10-6. and six. Sagu will drop into that log jam with USAO and the Eagles of Southwestern, congratulations to their big win today. They're at nine and seven. So now it's kind of a race for, I guess, fourth place. Uh, yeah, that's a, it's a big tie for fourth place right and now. And don't forget Wayland Baptist. And, and and Wayland Baptist still still in the mix can do some special things because Sagu's next game is against Wayland Baptist up up in the Panhandle, and uh, that will not be an easy one at all. Wayland Baptist already got the best of uh, the Lions uh, earlier this season, uh, earlier just a couple weeks ago, and uh, uh, the Lions going in there trying to get a little bit of revenge, and they will need it. They will need any any kind of motivation they can get. They've got to get a win up there. It could be a three-game uh, slide if they don't. Uh, because Mackey is not going to be any easier. And Mackey's the last game of the season. Yep, and uh, they are a very tough team. They lost to a very good Southwestern team. You can't just do the math and say Southwestern came in here and we beat them by almost 20 points. Uh, well, Southwestern just beat uh, Mid-America, so Mid-America would be an easy win. It doesn't work quite like that, and uh, Southwestern was a much better team than what they uh, showed uh, this Thursday. For the so. Rams, they're going to play Oklahoma City on the 25th uh, and then close out against WBU. Now that you've you've won the crown regular season, 
Any changes of your head coach, Brendan Shingleton, on resting starters? No or you just, way. Just go with what you got and uh, keep, keep this pressing. Is, this is the NAIA, baby. Uh, it's it's not like uh, Division One, uh, NCAA, or or the NBA. You don't you don't do the, that's shenanigan. You don't do that. You press the pedal and you try to end up the absolute best way you can end up because seating ma means everything. And where you you are in the nation, they can't afford to drop lower than seven. I mean, when I say can't afford, it just wouldn't be good to be there and then drop it this late in the season because you're just trying to rest players. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. You need to get as high in the national rankings Absolutely. so that you can get the easiest buy Absolutely. into um, uh, that national tournament. Oh. These, these guys are going to the national tournament, no question. No question about that. It's where will they get seated, and they need the best road. That is maybe the toughest stretch. I don't care, NBA, NCAA, uh, it doesn't matter. That may be the toughest tournament in America in any sports, the NAIA Final 32. It is, you got to win. Five games in like four, ga four days? Five, five, five games, games, games in, in seven, seven days. Seven days. So, uh, it, that that that's just unbelievable. Wow. wow! Both teams shoot exactly 33 percent from the field. Uh, the big difference, though, John, in fact, they both shot 78 percent from the line. So a lot of statistical anomalies of, of equality. Both leading scores had 17. Gentry had 17 as well as Rogers. But the big difference was in those rebounds. 56 to 37 advantage. You see it right there. That was a difference maker. Once the Lions cooled off. The Rams kept getting those loose boards. The offensive glass was huge in the second half, and that's why you see good teams find ways to win close ball games and end up with a 12-point win. So, well, we'll see you next Saturday. Right back here for our final game of the season against Mackey. So, until next time, on behalf of John Cookman, Adam Ferguson, our amazing Sagu Sports Network crew, this is Rob Price saying so long from the Schaefer. Until next time, as always, may the Lord bless you and keep you and give you His peace. Yeah.